Well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining on this beautiful sunny day. If you're here in Sydney, we were just complaining about not being outside. <laughs> um, very kind of you to give us your, um, your hour over lunch, hopefully to learn some practical tips about net zero. Um, before we kick off, I just wanted to um, get a kind of sense from the room about who who's here today. Uh, it's always helpful for us to know who's joined so that we can make sure the content's really um, relevant. So first of all, hopefully you'll have Slido coming up on your screen, just hoping to understand from you all what your role is. A um, bit of a list here so that we can we can see who's joining us. It's fun watching this live. Mm -hmm. Five people so far. Thank you. Gosh, I'm curious what other is. We'll have to find out. We'll have to dig into other shortly. Is anyone brave enough to let us know what other is? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So good population of people in the client services account management space, which is great to hear. Other, we are curious about marketing. Great. No one yet in the ESG role, which isn't surprising because I think most people that end up wearing the sort of sustainability hat don't typically have a formal role in it, at least in our customer base. Nice. If we can just get two more people, there's 21 on the call. So if we can get a <laughs> response. It takes I know two. a few are driving, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Drive, we don't have an accident. Yeah. <laughs> She's a founder, so you can put point there. Yes, true. And the next one, I think this is really interesting to where do you see yourself as a company on your journey to net zero? So starting from zero, I not even started to you're an absolute hero and you really want to be here to show off. Please let us know. <clears throat> cool. Excellent to see. Okay, so most people fairly early on the journey. That's so good to hear. That's hopefully why this um, this webinar has piqued your interest because it's very much targeted at businesses who are just getting started and keen to educate themselves about what net zero means and how their company uh, might be able to take some proactive steps. So thank you. Um, Taylor, I'm just going to start with some introductions. So maybe back to the first page. I just wanted to introduce myself quickly. My name's Kat. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Trace. Um, and just a little bit of background, my co-founder Joanna and I, we launched Trace at the start of 2020 with a mission to enable every business to reach net zero emissions. So what we've built is a software platform designed for small to medium enterprise that understand the role they play in creating a sustainable future, but need some help to get there. And by the sounds of, um, of the, the votes there, most people are early on their journey and we're here to educate you. Frankly, it's a long road to net zero. So our goal is to make it educational and fun, but we'll have a bit more on that later. I am thrilled to welcome Sam Buchanan, CEO of the Independent Media Agencies Australia, the IMAA, which is the industry body representing independent agencies. I spoke to Sam yesterday and he said that the, the, the um, body had come to a conclusion about a year ago that they'd sort of reached a size where they felt they had the responsibility to do some good. And that's when they started their sustainability journey which includes reconciliation, diversity and inclusion, and the environment. Their goal is to promote and educate their members about sustainability, and they've recently launched a quarter of a million dollar platform to educate the next generation of media people about this very topic. So super exciting to have you here today, Sam. Thank you. Um, I will let you do a proper introduction later, but I'm first just going to get to a little bit of debunking some terminology so that we're all on the same page when we start talking about sustainability and what we mean. So today is the first of our industry leader series. Thank you very much for joining. It's all about net zero in practice and what that means for companies. And we're starting with agency land. Um, we brought in the IMAA because they, we believe they're really leading from the front in terms of best practice. And we're hoping Sam can share some, some tips for you all. 
So let's just quickly cover some terminology because I'm sure you've all heard these terms and pr frankly, probably a bit confused by them, which um, we were too when we first started off in this journey. Um, I'm going to just start with carbon neutral because that's probably the one that you hear a lot and hopefully people are getting some familiar familiarity with. The key here is that what carbon neutral means is that a business has measured its carbon emissions, all of them, every both direct emissions and indirect emissions, and they've offset at least 100% of them. So by doing that, they've actually neutralized their, their carbon dioxide. This is well defined and largely understood, but there's still some companies out there making false claims without understanding um, the real background and definition. So we really want to make sure that we're very transparent when companies are making claims about being carbon neutral. Just to add a little bit of complexity, there is a phrase called carbon negative and carbon positive, which mean the same thing which is utterly confusing and bewildering for most people but essentially it means that you've actually offset more than your emissions so you're going above and beyond um, but unfortunately the terminology is not well defined so what do we really mean by net zero well this actually means that you, a company or government a person has a strategy in place to reduce emissions substantially the goal or the guidance is that it should be about 90 percent and only the remaining 10%, which are unavoidable, can be offset through carbon removal. So this is a fairly ambitious goal. And that's why when you hear people talking about net zero, it tends to be 10 targets 10, 20, even 30 years away, because that is an audacious and ambitious goal. You might have also heard the phrase climate positive. This really means positive action beyond just carbon. So carbon is a great way of measuring um, emissions, but it's not the only problem with the environment. We have waste, we have water. Um, so there's lots of climate metrics that we can be tracking as well. And really the ultimate goal should be to go beyond just carbon net zero. However, there's absolutely no definition underlying this. So if you just look at this, graph, you're probably thinking, wow, that is a pretty ambitious um, pathway. How on earth are we going to get from, you know, emissions as a company today to, to net zero, which is a 90% reduction? Well, rest assured that you're not alone if that's what you're worried about. Even the biggest companies out there with huge teams working on this are still a bit unsure. So I think the important thing to remember here is that we've got to start somewhere and that the sooner we begin, the higher ch our chances are of success. So that's why we're here today, to hopefully inspire businesses to get started today. Now, I just wanted to share a bit of data that we've gathered from working with hundreds of small to medium enterprise across Australia and New Zealand. This is kind of a breakdown of um, the emissions from all of our customers. And as you can see, about a quarter, roughly 25 percent, are actually directly influenced by employees. So your staff working from home and how they get to work. Those are things that your employees actually have control over. And that's actually a lot of emissions that you can then influence as an organization. Now, interestingly, only about 10 percent of companies with public net zero disclosures include their suppliers or their employees in their targets, which from our perspective is leaving emissions on the table. It's a lot missed opportunity. So at Trace, we really believe in engaging your stakeholders, namely your employees and your suppliers, in your targets and in your strategy, because that's how we'll get to 90% reduction. So I'm excited to reveal some extremely uh, cool initiatives that we've seen the IMAA um, start since they um, embarked on their sustainability journey. To name just a few, um, and these are just the public ones, I'm sure there's a lot going on behind the scenes that um, hopefully Sam can shed some light on. Firstly, the IMAA actually became a carbon neutral organization in October last year, which is a huge achievement. That means they measured their entire footprint of their staff, of their suppliers, of their travel, of their energy. And they have offset that through really high quality climate projects around the world in order to neutralize. They've since then for Earth Day planted trees completely voluntarily just to go above and beyond via the Canopy Project. They participated in Clean, Clean Up Australia Day recently and got their staff involved. And they've also recently launched a green team, which is a group of, of people within their, um, within their community driving towards a more eco-friendly tomorrow. So this is why we've invited Sam here today. And without further ado, I'm really excited to let Sam quickly introduce himself before I dive into some questions. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kat. 
Uh, hi guys, uh, my name's Sam Buchanan. I'm the CEO of the IMAA. Um, a little bit about the IMAA is we started out about four years ago, just trying to raise the voice for uh, for independent agencies. And, um, you know, we kind of went through three phases. Firstly, the phase about um, just putting a spotlight on it, talking about it in the trade press and giving a voice to Australian owned businesses. That also led us to conversations with the government and kind of, you know, dinners with prime ministers and kind of having that fight with um, uh, to ensure that Indies get a fair share. Um, secondly, it was about leveling the playing field or just reducing the running cost of businesses, um, which uh, was a key and, and, and really respected around the world for, from what we did from trade credit insurance to group deals. But the, the third part was, you know, we reached this and without sounding like an absolute flog, um, with great power comes great responsibility, and we've reached you know 165 odd agencies around Australia. And with that, it's important for us to to do some good, and that's where we did some work around uh, diversity and inclusion. And we're about to launch a female um, emerging leaders uh, mentoring program. We've done a reconciliation uh, wrap, and, and and we've got a charity out in Middle Australia that uh, that we support and and work very very closely in fact I was talking to them this morning and then finally you know the environment and you know it's such a um an important thing that affects every single person on the planet that um you know we cannot afford to to sit on the sidelines and we owe it to our members to be responsible and and lead the way not only for indies but for the um uh, for the wider media community and that's why we're so passionate about uh about doing it that's amazing. Thank you so much. And like, there's a lot to uncover there because I know sustainability to you at the IMAA is is not just about um, climate, but let's focus there today. Um, and, you know, having heard the introduction about what we really mean about net zero, why is that important to you personally as a leader, Sam? Yeah. So we've been on a tremendous journey with this. And, and probably the first part is we, we did a survey. We do a survey every year, a pulse survey. And it checks the the you know kind of what the indies want and 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 where the money's going to, and we ask questions about sustainability and um, reconciliation and so forth. But one of the biggest things that really stood out to me was, is that we did a survey and we do it every year. But the the one in December said that you know um, you know is it is uh, carbon is a company's carbon uh, credentials or sustainable credentials important to you as a business. And 50% said um, um, it's it's not currently impacting our business decisions, but this is coming down the down the track. Mm. And 48% said it's somewhat of a thing, but but it is coming. So what mm. that tells us is that I think everyone knows that that you know this is coming from from a business point of view, it is coming towards us. So when you look at companies like Goldman Sachs and the major investors, and they'll only support businesses that are, you know, that are that, that are uh, in, environmentally aware or sustainable, then this is going to come down to the food chain, to the agencies, and then eventually to the media as well, because they're going to be dumping an algorithm going, what are you doing and where do you sit? So we all need to have a position and we all need to kind of start working towards it. So that's probably the first thing, like from a business point of view, this is going to be here before we know it, and we've got to get on board with it. The second yep. part is from a staff point of view, like, you know, dare I say it, I'm, you know, I'm, um, I've been in the industry for probably 25 plus years now. <laughs> Hard to believe I know, right? <laughs> so I've been in the industry for plus, plus years. And when I first started out, you know, it was, you know, if I wanted to, to get a job, you know, and I wanted a pay rise or whatever, I would, you know, I would just tell me where to sit, and for extra $10,000, I will do whatever you say. This generation coming through is, thank goodness, it's a lot more uh, aware of, of purpose. And they'll go, what is your agency's purpose? Like, what is your business's purpose? What are you doing yeah. for this? And no one can sit back and go, you know, I've got a, I've got a recycling bin in the corner of the kitchen and I'm an environmentalist. Like, it doesn't cut it anymore. So we've got to get serious for this. If you want to attract talent as a business leader, you've got to have purpose. Uh, you've got to go, what are you doing? What do you stand for? So from those kind of two reasons, A, it's good for staff, good for you know, just being a good business leader and and and, and being a being a good person. Two, it's good business because you need to be ahead of it. Um, and, and three, it's it's the right thing to do. Now, why as a leader it's important for me to to drive it? Um, look, I think I've got I've got two small children, and I work in media and advertising. 
and I've got to balance this out a little bit. So yeah, I've got to look them in the face and say, this is what dad does for a living. And I take great mm-hmm. pride and this is why I get up and, you know, send uh, emails to my team in the middle of the night because uh, I'm very, very passionate about it and believe that, you know, that we need to lead uh, as an industry body, we need to lead from the front. That's amazing to hear. That's um, interesting, that sort of conflict you feel like you have from the work you're doing, but obviously you're very passionate about this on behalf of your of your children. Um, it resonates because my co-founder and I actually call ourselves climate conscious hypocrites because we are absolutely climate conscious. Obviously, this is what we do and why we go to work every day. Um, but equally, we're the first to jump on a plane. Um, you know, I can't pretend to be perfect in my diet. I own a car. You know, all these things are difficult choices that, it, frankly, they make your life a bit easier. But you know that there's a bit of tension there. So I think that's really what inspired us to start Trace was to help people at least start moving in the right direction, even if it's not perfect. True. Um, so just thinking about kind of you made you embarked on this journey last year, you said, right, we really want to stand for sustainability as an industry body. Obviously, one of the challenges, as I outlined before, is kind of what do you do next? Where do you even begin? From your perspective, what were the challenges of, of getting started and how did you overcome them? Uh, look, for us, it was it was a, and we were guided. We, we've got some partners um, uh net zero media which is one of our mm. members, uh, benedictus um you know we, we were guided by a lot of people around us and we it, we were advised that it was a little bit like to a degree you know there are some companies out there that aren't that reputable i was a little bit like the wild wild west to a degree we and and <laughs> not pre-rehearsed at all but Kat, we were guided to you guys oh, and we recommend as being you know high, highly uh one of the good guys so um, it's really, really important that that you know picking the right partners and just starting somewhere. Like for us, the challenges were just understanding what we can do. Um, we understood that our members wanted to do something about it, and uh, and this was our role. It was about where do we start? What is our role as an industry body? Um, mm. And 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 how can we help and change things? So you know when we did start out, it was about it was about education and putting a spotlight on we ran a number of webinars uh with project earth about you know getting people to talk about it and then putting a spotlight on it on our our website um with all of our you know we've got we've got five partners now obviously trace um that 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 works with us on our carbon um on, on our carbon plan uh net media zero that helps that helps media agencies uh, identify and work out how much carbon goes into what a specific campaign. So if you've got a campaign, it goes into that. Um, scope three that measures that measures um, um, the um, I guess digital the campaigns. Right. Yeah. C two zero, which does our mm-hmm. events, and they make all of our events. I believe that we are the only industry body um, in Australia of the media size that, um, that 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 has that has embarked on a journey like this. Um, and then seeing this as well, which kind of work on a way of just reducing the cost of the digital footprint or the um, carbon footprint of digital campaigns. Gosh, I mean, you've you know, by outlining the, all those different partners, you've clearly highlighted the importance of of choosing you know the right ones because of reputational um, at risks if you choose the wrong one. But uh, can you just, for the benefit of of the audience here, kind of explain? what why you chose a, a variety of different partners and, and what they all help you what what they're each contributing towards your your goals so each one of of of, of our partners um it's about education i think like our role is, is education and also each one of these guys give a um um a bit of an incentive for our members to to participate and also mm. um uh be part of it and, and kind of just start their journey um you know they all play a specific role um there's n- not too much double up in each but for right. us um but you know we are exploring what else can we do and 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 you know we'll lead from the front and make sure that our backyard is is, is tidy and see what we can do and then and then we'll educate and, and, and work on our members and say right if you need a hand then our, you know each one of our partners you know would more than happy to assist and and, and incentivize you to to do so love that it's so good and look, we work with a lot of agencies um who are very conscious that digital advertising and production and all these things do have a big footprint but they're not always in direct control of those right so i think what we always say to that is start with your own backyard as you just said sam you know what you can control is your own office space and 
helping your and educate your employees about the decisions they can make on a day-to-day basis and then the next step can be to look at i guess some of those um those indirect emissions from your advertising activities yeah and, and on that like a fun fact well it's not a fun fact but digital <laughs> advertising i think it makes up three percent of carbon emissions in the world yeah i was baffled by that like i said what well, that would be the you know compared to what newspapers or tv or what but you know three percent when you look at the grand scheme of things, is massive. So there's a lot yeah. we can do there on to reduce. Now I think we're scope three and seeing this kind of play in, play in those areas. That's awesome. So true. So talk to me about some of the triumphs. You know, you've done. You've been um, on this journey for about a year now. What have what uh, initiatives have you done internally, and what's really resonated um, with the IMWA? I think that the, the the education, and we've launched a page on our website. The education and the in the centres we've 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 kind of embarked on through group deals to to help people uh, understand and also you know um, um, really kind of lean into it. Um, mm-hmm. I think that we wanted to do some practical things, like some some things where we can you know really kind of all get involved, and and we we, we embarked on Plan for Australia Day. Um, and that was around Australia. We had agencies from Cairns to to uh, to St Kilda, from from Penrith to Perth, uh, all over Australia, doing it with our partners, which I thought was absolutely fantastic um, and really really worthwhile. Um, you know, we're moving into another phase now. So now we're moving into getting um, a bit of a working group on um, uh, on our initiatives called the Green Team, and we're just doing a bit of call out uh, for that. We've got some of our um, uh, agency founders. I think it's um, uh, who, who, so. There's one such as uh, Alchemy One, which is B certified, mm-hmm. uh, uh, have all kind of jumped onto this, and we're going to be kind of carving out some initiatives over the next twelve months. But really proud, probably ten pole moments is you know is kind of going um, starting our, our our journey in, in carbon neutrality and 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 kind of working with you guys on that. Uh, the physical events such as um, such as clean up uh, um, um, Australia Day, and we'll be looking at other ones, maybe tree planting or something throughout the year. And then, you know, every single um, uh, major tempole moment in terms of the calendar year around the environment, we'll also be doing educational webinars and uh, and talking about that about what we can do on a practical level and and how can we help our our agencies navigate the space. <clears throat> love that that's a that's a that's a lot of um a lot to achieve in a year so let's uh i'm excited to see what the next 10 could look like um so i just to to close out these specific questions then we can go into a bit of q a with the audience Uh, any specific advice based on what you've learned over the last year for an agency early in their journey and starting to embark on on reaching that zero probably probably two things um You know, so often in the media industry, dare I say, there's a lot of hot air to, to go around. So I would probably first thing is start somewhere, whether it be small or what have you, but just make a start. It's like any journey. Like you can't just put it in the too hard basket. Mm. Start, start somewhere. And the second one is, 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 you know, have someone in your team, in in your organisation to champion it and to mm. be like, like to be the one that kind of puts forward the initiatives and really drives it because we're all on the same page. Like I think I couldn't imagine anyone, you know, on the planet who doesn't think, oh, you know, it's not a good idea to do better things for the planet. So we're all we're all in this together, but mm. have someone to champion it and to really drive it. And I think that will really help um, uh, that. And then probably find one, education, education, ask questions. Yeah. You know, it's such a new space. Like ask questions, speak to people, uh, uh, speak to the IMAA, speak to you guys, you know, because we're all in this kind of journey and, and everyone's trying to do the best and, and, um, and understand what the best process is to move forward. I love that. And I think you're you're in a unique position as agencies that you do have a public voice, right? And you are able to tell a brand story. So um, if we can get that right and help companies tell that in a really authentic way, it hopefully will inspire, you know, thousands of others uh, to do the same thing. So it's it's really exciting for us to partner with agencies, be they media, marketing, advertising, because of that voice that you have um, to the public. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Like, dare I say it as well, sometimes as agencies, you know, it's it's the builder's house, it's the worst house on the street. We're not very good at telling our own stories, but, uh, but I think that's something we are doing collectively a little bit better than that. <laughs> and this is actually slightly off piece, but it's just, re- I just ca- came to me as I kind of thought about that, um, that comment. You know, I'm sure everyone in, in this call is very familiar with the term uh, greenwashing, which 
you know, is something that comes up a lot in the press, as it should, because I do think we need to hold companies accountable for making, you know, claims that they can substantiate. What would be some of the things you've learned about how to ensure that, you know, what you say publicly is not deemed as, as greenwashing? Look, I, I mean, everything from the IMWA point of view is, you know, we haven't come from myself and my team haven't come from, uh, from, 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 we've come from the background of, of, of agencies and media. So everything that we say, we've got to back it up with, you know, with, yeah. with doing something that's tangible for, you know, so when it comes to reconciliation, you know, we don't just want to talk about it and, and, and make a fluffy statement. We want to actually physically change people's lives, raise money and actually, you know, embed a charity and, and do things with the environment. We want to make sure that we don't just talk about, oh, this is the right way to do things. We actually lead the way first and 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 we, we we lead the way with that and by showing this is how we do it. This mm. is how we this is how we're partnered with it. Um, you know, the um a D and I and and diversity um you know, rather than just talk about it, we want to actually make physically cha physical changes. So we invested last year twenty thousand dollars into the Leaders for Good to uh, train twenty five uh, CEOs on inclusive leadership um, and how to do that in a week long course. And we're about to invest another um, probably twenty thousand dollars into the emerging female leaders as well. So it's really important from uh, from an IMWA point of view. Uh, that if we say something in the trade or do something, we actually back it up with what we with some actual action, uh, and we don't want to say anything just for the sake of it. So when it comes to the environment, we're going to lead the way and and do it that way. Yeah, I love that. I think we always say, you know, you can't be accused of being um, if you're transparent. You know, as long as you're uh, being very open about what you do know and what you don't know, then that's all we can ask here. And and it is a complex um, journey. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, even the biggest companies out there, as I said at the start, are still trying to navigate how on earth we get to that mega reduction in emissions. But if they're upfront about that, then you know they can't be um, they can't be accused of, of misleading anyone. Amazing. Well, um, I mean that was a, a very rapid fire back and forth between you and I, but I would love to open it up to um, the floor to to ask any questions either to myself or Sam or just to kind of kick start. So. Oh, love this. How can I encourage my leadership team to take action? Can I I'll leave it over to you, Sam, first, and then yeah, I might add yeah. some thoughts? I, I would say there's two very, very key things that I kind of alluded to at the front. It's two key points. It is good business because if, you know, in the same way, like on a tender list, they asked, you know, several years ago, like I used to see it, like, um, you know, what is your stance on the modern slave labor, you know, slave labor? And it's like, I'm slave labor. When you think about it and you think like, oh, if I off, you know, um, uh, give it off to a team and they're kind of working with a team in another, in another country, you lose control of that. So in the same way that, um, that um, you know, in tenders, these questions have come up, we will get more and more questions about mm. what are you doing for the environment? And uh, if, if you're not seeing it now, mark my words, you will see it in the next 12 months. So you've got to get on the front foot. You've got to be able to answer that. Uh, so it's good business. First, mm. that will, any CEO or accountant and stuff will go, bugger, you're right. You know, we do have to get on the front board. And secondly, it's the right thing to do as a, as, as a human being. And thirdly, your staff want it, you know. Yeah. Your staff want this. So uh, if you want staff engagement, it's, it, it's the best way to do it. Oh, I love that so much. I think it when we first started out with Trace, a lot of it was um, driven by kind of this sense that they felt they had to. Um, there was kind of risk mitigation, which I think still applies. But more and more, I think our customers are seeing this as a actually just good for business. You know, it drives hopefully drives growth. It helps retain staff. It helps build their brand. So, yeah, look, if there's anybody that would like to help, uh, uh, like to put a story towards their leadership team, we'd be more than happy to help. And it sounds like Sam would be, too um where are we does trace have a calculator for businesses to calculate their carbon footprint yes we we do indeed um it's probably not quite as i would probably wouldn't call it a calculator in that it's not something that you just kind of pop a bit of data in and then it pops out a number because we've um spent a, several years now developing a, a methodology that's that's highly accurate but also nice and simple for a business so uh, we work with you to gather the data we need in order to turn that into a, a carbon emissions assessment. So would love to chat to you if that's um, on your agenda and for the next, uh, for starting your journey. 
Amazing. Um, another one for you, Sam. What were the first steps you had to take to become carbon neutral? Um, we had to understand, well, firstly, we had to understand who we need to partner with. Uh, mm. That was the first steps we did. Uh, so we spoke to a lot of people about trust and, 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 and who do we need, because there's a lot out there. Mm. Um, so once we established that, then we need to have a bit of a look at, you know, our organisation and we're four people. Um, you know, uh, we do a bit of travel, um, but there's we weren't as complicated as as probably some large, large, you know, 180 or, a, a person agencies. So we've had a look at our what we do and our habits and and how we work and how we operate, um, and then calculate that and then offset it from uh, from there. Amazing, that's great to hear. Uh, some clients are starting to make it known that they want agencies to be transparent around sustainability. Yes, so true. Do you think there's an opportunity for agencies to take the initiative and lead clients by example on sustainability? Ooh, <laughs> for me? I reckon so. It's your industry. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a tough question. I think that, um, you know, ideally, ideally, you know, we've all got to look after our own businesses and 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 I think that we make commercial decisions on mm. on, on profitability and so forth. However, um, I think that where what we can control, um, you know, is definitely only a positive thing for your agency. So whether it's your own carbon output, I mean, when you when you give it to a, a third party, a, 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 you know, some of our suppliers, you lose control of that carbon journey, obviously. But what you can control with some of the initiatives, you know, sure. if you even just have a goal to work towards, okay. I think is just the first kind of step you've got to do it. Um, you know, we do, I think, lead by example. I think that, you know, everyone... No one's going to look on, you know, get be in a pitch and, and someone goes, um, you know, uh, uh, we, you know, we're on a sustainable journey and this is what about our agency. You know, that's only going to be seen as positive. So the more that you can differentiate yourself, you know, the lines between, and I'm going to go a bit of a rant here, but the lines between, you know, I talk about this a lot between holding companies and, 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 and indies, you know, it's it, it's really kind of leveled out quite a bit. I mean, there used to be the days of of holding companies will be able to buy at a significant rate cheaper. Uh, that's kind of gone. It's all bid based now. Seventy percent of the market is bid based. So the level's been playing field. The true definition of what your agency stands for, um, and that could be sustainability and also data and how you use data. And that's just tools. And that's more and more accessible. So anything that you can do to make your agency. Um, uh, more of a environmentally aware or an environmental citizen and lead the way will only help you in business full stop. I love that. Yeah. And it's, I mean, from my perspective, it's very much a two way street. You sort of got the pressure from larger companies who have mandatory requirements to report on their emissions. And therefore, you know, they're starting to ask their agencies, as this person has yeah. pointed out. Um, but certainly it's cyclical. And, yeah. you know, I'm actually seeing some companies elect to only work with businesses that have some sort of purpose statement or, um, you know, or carbon target. And that's a great way to inspire action. Put your money where your mouth is. And 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 I said it before, but, um, you know, when you the, the likes of Goldman Sachs only invest mm -hmm. in businesses, it's going to come down the food chain to, yeah. to agencies. So we really need to kind of focus on that. Government tenders, they're all over, they, you know, mm -hmm. you get awarded points for certain things. And, and, you know, the environment is definitely one. So if it's not happening, you know, currently with your current stable of clients, um, you're talking about winning your business. I think about keeping business as well. Yeah. You've got to um, uh, be on the front foot with this stuff. Yeah, that's so interesting. We've had one question come through the Q&A. Um, mm. Becoming carbon neutral sounds difficult. Was mm. it difficult, Sam? <laughs> um, no. Uh, no, in fact, it was pretty, uh, very, very easy. Again, we are, we, you know, the IMAA is a, is a relatively small association. So uh, we don't have, we don't have 100, 100 people. But for us, it was understanding what our habits were and um, it, um, um, it, 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 it wasn't that hard for us. It, it took a little bit of time from, uh, from Beck Colson, uh, who I work with, to, uh, to bring us to life. But it, it wasn't that hard. In fact, it was minimal, to be honest. Yeah, that's great. To, that's great to hear. I think there's probably a bit of a perception out there that measuring emissions becomes this sort of ginormous six month uh, project. Uh, certainly speaking from Trace's perspective, we've worked very hard to make that not the case. 
Um, so our platform is really designed to for for the you know the the lay person to be able to use understand their emissions very quickly and, and take action on it. So it's great to hear Sam that it wasn't um, a big onerous process. We've had one awesome comment come through from Carolyn. Um, Kat and Sam, you may have seen it pop up, mm. wondering if um, the trace process uh, supports a B Corp application. Oh, great question. Thanks, Sam. We've actually, um, as Trace, just put in our application um, to be for B Corp. So I'm very familiar with the, the business impact assessment. Um, and the simple answer is yes, the, the environment section of B Corp really focuses on how well do you understand your impact on the environment and do you have plans in place to, to address those? So first question is, do you understand your scope one, two and three emissions and what are they? That's absolutely what we can help with. Um, in terms of offsetting, we also can provide those if companies wish to become carbon neutral. And then setting targets is also something that we are advising clients on. So it's definitely a great way to, to get some more points on the BIA and the environment section. Cool question here. What are the big areas of emissions impact in the ad supply chain and or for agencies? Sam, do you want to um, look yourself? Oh, uh, look, I would say... And I was surprised that I mentioned before the digital, uh, digital, and the big thing from that, and and forgive me, I'm not an expert on it, um, but I believe it's the it's a data storage, yeah, is massive. Like That's the it. energy it uses to cool those uh, those huge data storages uh, units uh, is absolutely massive. Um, a lot of the other probably more traditional areas of the uh, supply chain, such as outdoor. Um, they're all started this journey as well. So they're working on, you know, uh, products that are um, carbon neutral. Um, and again, the the net zero media team kind of look at, you know, look at a campaign that you might have and can, mm. and can kind of work out how many tonnes of carbon it would use uh, to do it. And then should you have a client who, who wishes to run a purely neutral um, uh, carbon campaign, they can give you a verified stamp on that to go, this campaign is actually carbon neutral because they offset it with the, and calculate the amount of carbon uh, it would use to run it. Mm. Yeah, so true. There's so many different parts there. As you said, the, the digital is probably the largest just because of, if you think how many billions of web pages there are out there, each with your, each with the media on the side, there's actually a lot of data now to show which um, websites are more efficient in terms of carbon per impression. Um, so there's a lot of companies out there trying to solve for that. And even like, uh, I think it's seen this, um, uh, you know, that kind of programmatic journey. There's so many hands and bits of tech mm. involved within that. If they kind of minimize the supply chain through SSPs and DSPs, uh, that reduces a ton of carbon and also makes your ads load, um, load faster as well. Yeah, great point. And then obviously you mentioned as well other type, you know, non-digital digital advertising tends to be fairly wasteful if you're kind of creating new um, collateral printing things, you know, which ultimately might end in landfill. Um, mm. There's definitely a, a carbon cost to that as well. Mm. Um, was it easy to bring your employees on your climate journey, Sam? Uh, very easy. Uh, obviously. Um, look, I think that, and I'll probably just talk about my kind of journey with, with our team. I mean, you know, our guys, are, uh, Tian and, and, and Beck, uh, are all very, you know, socially aware and, and, and they love that. But I think as well, it's important that, um, uh, you know, from an agency point of view, bringing your staff on the journey, everyone, you know, it's all good to, it's, it's all very passive when you become, you know, carbon neutral. Notes. In fact, there's not much you can do. But also if you marry that up with some physical things that you can do as a team to really kind of govern, it's like what we did with um, Clean Up Australia Day. It was quite nice to do something physically together as a group, uh, as marrying that up with as well as what we're doing kind of behind the scenes by, you know, by, by doing the right thing. So it kind of brings it to life a little bit more rather than the passive kind of, hey, guys, guess what? We are, you know, carbon neutral now. So, you know, mm. it's great to marry it up with some physical exercise. Very cool. Um, and, you know, apps, this is the goal of this is not for me to be selling trace, but just so you understand what it looks like and um, what we think employee engagement looks like. It, it really starts with educating them and making them feel like they're part of the journey. So we do that by 
sending out a carbon footprint quiz to all of your employees so they learn about their personal footprint, but also we gather the data that's really essential to calculating your, co your company's uh, footprint. So lots of data, which is cool. Um, and then we play that back um, via a presentation to your staff at the end. Very cool. Well, I think that brings us nicely to the nearly 45 minute mark. So unless there's any other final questions or remarks that you want to make, Sam? No, look, just thank you for the opportunity to talk, Kat. Um, really enjoyed it. I think it's such an important topic that, um, that you know, our, uh, our agencies and our community really need to start to get ahead around, not just, again, for, for the, it's the right thing to do as a business, but also it's the right thing to do for your business. Yeah, love that. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks everyone for, for joining us over lunch. Please do reach out to the Trace team or the IMAA who we would both love to advise on kind of next steps for your sustainability journey.